Well, Gilly, it should be a beauty, this game. So let's introduce our first guest for tonight. He's one of the rising stars at Collingwood, and he knows how to kick a goal. Please welcome Magpie star Alex Fasolo! Alex, welcome to the Mangrook Footy Show. Great to have you on. Beautiful. Thanks for having me. Yep. And uh, so far this year, the Pies have had a few injury concerns early on in the year, so it's yeah. given you, you, an opportunity for you guys like yourself, side bottom, uh, also young beams, and you really stood up in the first, you know, eight, nine games for the year for the club. Yeah, and yeah. just how have you found your own form as well? Well, obviously, we obviously copped a few uh, injuries early on. And it means guys like Steele and uh, Beams who've really stepped up, which has been good. Yep. Um, and, yeah, look, I've played every game this year except for one uh, where I was a bit injured. But um, other than that, yeah, look, it's been a good start to the year. But wouldn't mind, uh, you know, having a better second half. And it looks like you really like kicking goals too, mate. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy yourself. I do love kicking goals. Okay. The boys let me know about it too. Let's yeah. just talk about the, the new coach, Nathan Buckley, because yep. obviously there was a lot of conjecture when Mick Malthouse was a coach and Bucks was coming and all that. How have you found Nathan Buckley as a coach and perhaps what's just the differences between the two coaches so far? Yeah, obviously uh, Mick was a little bit more old-fashioned, so I guess uh, Bucks coming in, he's, uh, it's been a really smooth transition, so all the boys have uh, responded really well. And I guess he bridges that gap between uh, the player and coach Maybe a little better than Mick, maybe, which yep. is maybe a little difference. But, uh, you know, the boys really responded well to him and I guess, I guess the uh, proof's in the pudding with us Alex, sitting almost at the top. So. Sorry, mate. You, you love to kick a goal. We heard Grant say that. And I've watched you, watched you. I actually love watching you play. Um, and you don't mind celebrating a, a little bit here and there. And, uh, <laughs> I've toned it down a little bit. I've actually I've done a bit of homework here. A great goal here. But I actually had a look at it. Your celebration, very ordinary. <laughs> you gave nothing but... <laughs> I don't mate, remember that. I've just put a bit of a package. Is that me, is it? Yeah, 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 that's you. I've put a bit of a package of myself. Now, you can yep. take a couple of these home. Yep. Here's, one, here's one here. I'll just show you. <laughs> this is just a lazy game, this one here. I kicked six. Oh, that was a little clap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. oh, double clap. Oh, yeah. I, I kick, and this one here. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the lady? Just <laughs> try to go. That's good. That's really good. I obviously got a lot of work to do. Well, you know what? I had a thing. My players knew. Yeah. Barnes knew. I had to celebrate. Then they can come and pat me on the back. I had to... That was yeah. sort of like... Tell the boys, don't come near me. So you can take a yeah, couple okay. of those home if you want. This week I'll be giving it Alex. to the <laughs> Alex, enough of the lair rising that he does. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I want to ask you a serious question. And yep. One thing that I've been really impressed with you in the forward line is... Collingwood, they had Brad Dick there previously. Mm -hmm. Andrew Cracker got injured early uh, mm -hmm. in the year. He's out for the year. Didak's been injured. How good is it for the Collingwood Football Club to have someone like you come in? It's like you've been playing for the last two or so years. Mm. That's the, that shows the depth of your footy club. Yeah. You've got unbelievable depth. Well, we, wrote, we, we pride ourselves on having players that can come into the team and play that role, and no matter what, who your name is. Mm. So, obviously, it's, you know, it's pretty hard to lose guys like Cracker, Didak, McAffar, these guys. But, you know, um, Ben Sinclair's come into the team and played his role really well. You know, I've come in, guys like Kirk, Eugle... Has played, played pretty well. Even little Blairy sneaks up there. Jared as well. Blair, yeah, and even moved into the midfield and really mm. providing heaps. So, mm. yeah, it's really good. It's a credit to all of us, yeah. Just going uh, in a different direction here, uh, Alex, uh, we talked about the social network uh, earlier with uh, Carlton doing some tweets. What's your mm -hmm. club policy and uh, do you tweet or Facebook? I'm a, I'm a big Twitterer. Yeah. No, I'm not a massive Twitterer. I like Twitter. I've got a few followers. Yeah. Follow me on Twitter, Alex <laughs> Cello. So, uh, <laughs> um, no, we, we're pretty much told by media blokes that, look, if whatever you're tweeting, whatever you're putting out there, prepare to have it quoted on the front page of the Herald. So um, I try not to take Twitter too seriously. And... Uh, yeah, I don't really see the point in having cracks and umpires on Twitter. So, that's right. We've so. got a twit on here, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I was talking to uh, Chrissy out in the back room. He wants to know if you've been punched in the lip at all. <laughs> and the second one, is it true that Daisy got engaged during the week? It's uh, only a rumour, but I don't know if it's true. Oh, it's floating around, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, look, Daisy isn't engaged, but it's probably not far around the corner. Ooh, it's pretty serious. Close. And now uh, my lips are all pure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Al, uh, you've, uh, you went from, as we've seen in the footage here, you're 35 yep. uh, last year, and you've gone to number one. What's the reasoning behind that? Uh, well, every year, uh, 35 is given to our first draft pick. So that was me uh, last year. This year, Jamie Elliott's wearing it. And uh, so I had to give it up, and then Bucks offered me number one, and I uh, jumped all over it. So did, yeah. uh, did Peter Dockos make that rule or not? Because Peter Dockos, he's a good player too. Dockos, yeah, Dockos isn't bad either. Nah, but, he, but that's his old number. Did he? Make Dacos, that? Yeah. Did um, he say to the club that that's how I want this number treated? It was actually uh, nothing to do with Peter Dockos. It was more to do with uh, Dockos. Well, Dockos, Peter Dockos. <laughs> um, 
It was, I think it was, the, it was a club, probably the board that came up with the idea, and just mm. with Simon Prestia Como being the real uh, team man. Some people forget that he actually wore it for however many years. And uh, well, I just reckon it's great that they could get Holland. a great number because normally it's given to a superstar or someone who's come over with big yeah. raps. So, no, it's great. Yeah. Can I just ask you about... Um, Nick, Nick's Mac wax well. Uh, <laughs> Doc Ossin and Mick's well. Doc Ossin. I mean, he, he mucks me up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you worry about me too much. <laughs> Mate, just his form. I mean, I, I watched Nick and uh, play and that. Is he carrying an injury? I mean, no, you're not going to tell us, but no one's watching the show, so just tell us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is he carrying him? Because in the last couple of weeks, he's actually been a bit... I mean, he hasn't been that normal role. He's running off the halfback flank and really running down. He's yeah. just sort of been staying home a lot in the halfback flank. Yeah, look, he gets his role every week, and uh, I don't think he's carrying injuries. And if he was, he hides them pretty well and keeps them pretty. You know... Why are you kicking me on the leg? <laughs> Sorry, man. I tell you where I'm. <laughs> he's lying, see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about the big game on the weekend because Chris, most of the good teams in the last decade have had really good backlines that have won the grand final. Now the West Coast have got a very good backline. Collingwood's got a very good backline. Also the midfield on the weekend. Collingwood's midfield's great, but they've got a lot of taggers at West Coast that can counter counteract the Collingwood midfield dominance as well. Yeah, look, they're, they're, uh, they're really standing up. I think both, to- uh, both sides, their defence are both standing up. And when they've lost uh, certain players in those key areas, you know, Collingwood have been, uh, you know, lost Tarrant during the year. They lost, uh, you know, uh, Shaw as well. And they were able to uh, fulfil, you know, their position. So I think uh, to be able to be some, uh, you know, be that last day in September, you've got to have a solid defence. Barnsley, Collingwood, the Ruck Division, they've got Jolly in the team this week and he's up against Nat and Ewing Cox, two of the best guys running around the competition. You're the Ruck coach down at Collingwood. How did he instruct him to go out this weekend and play against those two guys? He's been in and out of the side himself. Natalie, Nat, I've got your disease. He's <laughs> disease. Nat and Ewing's, uh, look, we all know he's an absolute star. He's going to be for 10 years and I think everyone had trouble with Aaron Sandlands when he first came onto the park and we've mm. seen to work him out. It won't be long before someone comes up with a plan against this bloke, but advice is just to jump early, don't let him get that, that leap at the ball and obviously Cox has gone down with his, with his leap but they're, uh, they're a dynamic duo and Dawes is going to have his work cut out for him when he has to go part time. Nicky Nutt had 18 contested um, possession footy, or contested footy, I mean, yeah, as, as a ruckman. You don't see it, right? So don't see it, yeah. Well, how many blokes do you know that can jump as high as what he can and, and the athleticism and the speed? Uh, and he hasn't played footy for a very long time and God knows where he's going to be in five years. He'll be an absolute untouchable. So that's but a bit... Barnsley, Worst files come out and he said, because they haven't won at the MCG, they haven't won there for a couple of years. He's come out and said it doesn't matter. Now, I know when we used to play, and you know when you'd have a, the wood on, on, on an opposition? Do you think that if they win this game, that's going to put him in good stead for later on? Or, no, or is he playing mind games? Because most I most reckon definitely. they need to win this game for their own confidence to show everybody... That they've arrived. Well, the G's the biggest game of the year is played at the G, and if they're going to make finals, they're probably not going to get a game in Melbourne until grand final day if the form goes the way it does. And if they don't win here, you have to ask some questions because I think they only get one more crack at it. So you've got to be playing the best you can, mm. Jono, on the MCG because it's the home of footy. Uh, the Collingwood midfield, uh, particularly Swan against the West Coast the last few games, I think he's polled quite a few Brownlow votes too, but that midfield, they give you good supply down the forward line there, oh, don't yeah, they? It makes, makes my job a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, and uh, obviously we all know Swan's a superstar, but it's been guys like Steele and Dane Beams who have really stepped up this year, and even Jared Blair playing a little cameo role. It's um, just made our life as forwards a lot easier. Yeah. Chris, young Jack Darling, he's really stood up this year in the absence of Kennedy. Kennedy's probably not going to come back for another eight games, but he's been a real big plus for them to be able to stand up in, against some good quality opposition. Look, he, he's just been presenting himself. He's been he's seen the opportunity that's uh, that arose for him and uh, probably going under the radar a little bit uh, towards the opposition, not showing him enough respect. And he's been able to present himself, you know, at the ball whenever the ball's coming down uh, off half back and through the middle, and they're kicking the ball to him and it's giving them an opportunity or uh, an option going forward. All right, well let's get some selections on this game. Barnes, we'll go straight to you first, champ. Yeah, look, I reckon uh, both sides are bat very deep and it's going to be the 15th to 22nd man that will win the game for either side, so I'm, I'm hoping that Collingwood's death's a bit bigger than <laughs> West Coast. <laughs> Good point. Chris? I, I think Collingwood, they're well rested. They've had a fair break and they uh, this will be their biggest test that they've had in the last uh, three or four weeks, so Collingwood. OK. Rock and running. West Coast a chance, are they? I'm actually... Uh, I'm going to go with uh, West Coast because they're up in the back. 
Nicky, Nicky, Nat, just absolutely sensational. That's when you want him up and going and uh, lead up to this game. I think they're, they're going to be flying. Scott Selwood is just an absolutely sensational tagger and he'll probably get the job on Dane Swan. So I'm going to tip the Eagles at a tight one. OK, well, Alex, we know who you're going for. Gilly, it could be a wet weekend on the, on the weekend. Will that make a difference? Oh, look, I, I don't think it'll matter. These two sides, it's just going to be a great game of footy. I actually think that uh, Collingwood will win this game and okay. I reckon they'll win. <laughs> Yep. Well, I'm going to put my head on the chopping block here. I'm going to go for the West Coast Eagles. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. <laughs> Just want to ask Alex about Joe Watson. I mean, very important player for the Bombers and uh, probably Ryan Crowley will probably get the job on him and he's uh, probably the second, third best tagger in the competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, he is. we played against Bombers in a lot of clashes, obviously. I mean, Joe Watson, how important is he to the Bombers in that oh, midfield? He's a superstar. And more than anything, just him being there attracts a lot of attention from the opposition. I mean, it takes right means. It means their second-tier midfielder is going to clean up if uh, Crowley goes to Joe, which I'm sure he will. Yeah, uh, yeah he, he has a massive influence on games, absolutely. All right, well, let's game this one. I just want to ask Alex, being the freshest bloke that's still playing the game, six weeks out, I think, Adam Goods, is it longer? It might be five or six. It's one of those mm -hmm. two weeks. What's it like to be coming back after a, an injury like that, mate, and especially the time being out? How will he fit in? Uh, I wouldn't be worried if I was Adam Goods. I mean, the bloke's a superstar, so I'm sure he'll just come back and hit the ground running. Not underdone, do you don't think? What's that, sorry? Not underdone? No, nah, no, nah, he'll be fine. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> didn't, no, he's gone. He'll be right. He'll sleep. <laughs> I, tend to, I tend to agree with you, Alex, but the Sydney Swans are very unrelenting, aren't they? They keep at you at the whole time. They're probably the tightest, mm. toughest team in the competition. Well, I think where, the, that's where this game's going to be won, probably contested possession, and it's probably where uh, um, the public's been a bit sceptical of Geelong, which is probably why I think Sydney might win is because they win the uh, contested possession. I think too. Tips, Barnsley, first to you. Yeah. Geelong seventh on the ladder. Ooh. They need to win this to kickstart their season because yep. they've got a good four games coming up. So I'm going for the Cats. They have to win it yeah. to be contenders. OK, Chris? Yeah, I'm with Barnsley. I think the Cats are going to win because Sydney haven't played Friday night football since 2003 and I reckon they'll be a bit shy of Friday night football. <laughs> <Okay>. for real? <laughs> yep. Ronnie, Ronnie, you look Stephen like a stun mullet. Sorry? You look like a stun mullet. No, like just these two. Right right um, <laughs> Stephen Motlop, I've got the looks, can sing, can play. Yeah. Chris is sitting in the side. Geelong, easy. Over OK, Alex, your selection uh, this one. I'm going to go with Sydney and go the other way in terms of... Uh, I reckon Goodsy coming back, the boys will want to play well for him. OK, Gilly. Yeah, no, look, I'm, I'm going to go for the Swans because I think that the Cats are a bit top-heavy and the SCG... Yeah, they're top-heavy. Well, Podziali, I wouldn't put him in He's there. He's 89 kilos. Well, Ronnie, can he run Tips around Gilly. like Selection a ruck Yes, he can. I will go for the Swans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for the Swans too, Gilly. I think they can win this one well, if at Ronnie home. Can, if so Ronnie can be quiet, I can well. say no, what I'm going to say. No, no, no. Well, let's get a selection then, Barnsley. Yeah, look, um... I don't think North Melbourne's going to open hell. I'm going to go for... Uh, <laughs> I hate to say it, I'm going for Adelaide. It's, 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 it sucks to say it, but it's what it is. Chris, quickly, Crows. Yeah, I think the Crows quite easily. Ronnie? Yeah, I'll get the Crows. Alex? Yeah, the Crows, but good to see Liam Anthony, a fellow East Fremantle Shark, back in the team. Yep, OK. Well, Gilbert, your selection? Yeah, no, I normally pick uh, an outsider. This is my outsider for the round, North Ooh. Melbourne. Ooh. They go well, are uh, they? They go. They play well against the uh, Adelaide Crows, and I reckon that that's my upset for the round. Okay. Well, Gilbert, I'll stick with the Adelaide Crows. I'll be way too strong. Alex, thanks very much for joining <laughs> oh, us on yeah. the Footy Show tonight. Yeah. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you.